Hi everyone! Tonight's video is on two different types of angiosperm called monocots and eudicots. Or eudicots can be abbreviated dicots, and that's how I am going to refer to them in this video. Monocots and dicots differ in structure and growth patterns, and we're going to go through each of these. Example monocots are grass and lilies. I bet you didn't know that grass was a flowering plant. But in fact, if you don't mow the lawn, it will form flowers, not what you think of as flowers, but it does form a flower reproductive structure. An example dicot would be a rose or even your apple trees. So first I want to go through some just basic flowering plant structure. Of course, you know that this would be an angiosperm because you can see the flower. Anything in any plant that we see above ground, we refer to as the shoot system. Any structures that are below ground are the root system. When I'm talking about the differences in structures between monocots and dicots, we are going to see that there are differences in the leaves, that there are differences in the root system, there are differences in the flower structure, and there's also differences in the vascular structure and the first leaves that are produced by the plant when it's initially germinating. So let's go through each of these differences. The first difference is in the first leaf that is produced by the plant when it first sprouts from the ground. That first leaf is called a cotyledon, and the cot part of monocot is short for cotyledon. If you look at a monocot, when it first emerges from the ground, it just has one leaf coming straight up. If you looked at the seed of a monocot, you would see that the embryo inside the seed, in addition to having the endosperm, would have an embryonic plant with just one cotyledon. When you see a dicot sprouting from the ground, it initially comes up and opens up with two first leaves, or two cotyledons, which is where the term dicot comes from. If you look at a dicot seed, you would of course see the large endosperm, and you would see the embryonic plant with two cotyledons, or two first leaves. The structure of the vascular system in the stems and leaves also differs between monocots and dicots. So if we look at the vascular system of a plant, remember you have water being transported in the xylem and sugars being transported in the phloem. If we look more up close at what the structures of these two transport systems look like, the phloem is composed of living cells and it transports sugars made in the leaves to all parts of the plant and the fluid moves in both directions, both up and down. If you look at the xylem, it is composed of tubes of dead cells that are lined with lignin and that is our molecule that remains a rigid structure and allows plants to grow upright as if they had bones even though they don't have bones. The xylem transports water and dissolved minerals from one in one direction only, from the roots all the way up to the leaves, so material only moves in that one direction. The arrangement of the xylem and phloem in the stems is different in monocots and dicots. If we look at a dicot and we do a cross section through a stem, what you'll see is there's a wagon wheel of bundles, and the green part of this bundle is the xylem, and the little purple part on the tip of each of these bundles is the phloem. And you can see that it's very organized in this wagon wheel structure. Xylem, phloem on the outside, xylem on the inside, phloem on the outside, all around the edge of this dicot stem. If you look at a monocot stem, it just looks like someone threw these vascular bundles down in a random order. It's very disorganized. Each of these purple structures is a combination of xylem and phloem, but they are placed randomly throughout the stem. If you look at the leaf structure of monocots and dicots, you will see a distinct difference. First of all, in monocots, you tend to see a long, narrow leaf. And if you look closely, you can see these veins, which are actually bundles of xylem and phloem, are arranged in parallel. You never see anything other than parallel veins. If you look at a dicot leaf, first of all, it's very broad. It's much wider than a monocot leaf. And if you look at the veins, they have more of a web-like pattern. 
Now, this is where some students get a bit confused, because if you look closely at these vein patterns in this diclot leaf, you would say, well, this vein is parallel to this one, so it has parallel veins. And yes, that's true, but it also has many other veins coming off of these parallel veins, giving it more of a web-like pattern. In a monocot, you only see mono um, parallel veins. You don't see any web-like pattern at all. If we were to look at the root structure of monocots and dicots, you would see a drastic difference. In a dicot, you see what's called a large taproot. The center root is this big fat root which has some small roots coming off it. If you're out in the garden weeding and you get a weed and you're pulling and pulling and it just won't come up, and I almost guarantee that that is a dicot because those tap roots can be really difficult to remove and they can go very deep into the soil. Monocots, on the other hand, have these fibrous root systems that often don't go as deep. This picture can be a little bit misleading, but you don't see any one central root system and you can pull them up quite easily when you're pulling monocot um, weeds in the garden. The flower structure differs dramatically between our two types of flowering plants. In a monocot, the flowers have petals in multiples of three. So you can see you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Therefore, this is a monocot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, this is another monocot. And if you look closely at these pictures, you can also see that this has a long, narrow leaf, and again, a long, narrow leaf. So that would be your second clue that this is a monocot. If you could look even closer at these leaves, you would see parallel vein structures. In a dicot, you see flowers in petals of multiples of four or five. So here we have one, two, three, four, five petals, makes it a dicot. Here we have four petals, also makes it a dicot. Again, look closely at this picture and you see a broad leaf in each case, which is different from these long narrow leaves in the monocot. If you were to look even closer, you could see a web-like pattern of the veins in these leaves. So in summary, the differences between monocots and dicots, which are two types of angiosperm, are in their first leaf or cotyledons. They have a different vascular system. It's random in the monocot, and it's organized like a wagon wheel in the dicot. The leaf structure in the monocot is very narrow with parallel veins. In the dicot, it's a broad leaf with web-like veins. The root structure in a monocot is a web-like structure with no large central root. The root structure in a dicot has a large central tap root. The flower structure in a monocot, the petals are in multiples of three. And in a dicot, those petals are in multiples of four or five. You should know these differences between monocots and dicots. And if given a picture of a leaf or a plant, a whole plant or the flower or just the roots, you should be able to identify it as a monocot or a dicot. You should also be able to state at least one example of a monocot angiosperm and a dicot angiosperm that you know from your life. That's all for tonight.